Over the last five years, mobile devices have become capable of keeping tabs on and even controlling aspects of uh, other everyday devices. For example, our cars, lights, and even refrigerators. It is estimated that by 2021, there will be about 20 billion connected things in our world. And many of these are consumer focused, but there is an increasing number of devices that support business applications. And this explosion in connected devices is partly because devices are becoming cheaper, meaning that more and more organizations can purchase and deploy them. But also devices are becoming smarter. They not only record observations, but also performing actions and triggering alerts. And what's most common among these sensors is that they capture location, whether it's a mounted sensor on a fleet vehicle, or if it's a smart light or a thermostat anchored to a fixed location in a building, devices are increasingly including a location component as part of their data stream. And this broadens the opportunity for us to use this real-time spatial data and make decisions. As connected devices continue to become more prevalent, the need to manage and analyze the data produced by them is growing. And this is truly big data because we are obtaining hundreds of thousands or even millions of records of observations per second. But building systems that can take advantage of this high volume and high velocity of data is challenging. These systems need to be highly available, scalable, and resilient while also being easy to configure and maintain. For many organizations, this go beyond the scope of traditional on-prem solutions. But by deploying IoT analytics in the cloud, you can access the analytic power needed to handle high volume, high velocity data. And to help customers use cloud computing to address these IoT challenges, uh, Esri introduced ArcGIS Analytics for IoT. ArcGIS Analytics for IoT provides real-time and big data analytics in the cloud as part of ArcGIS Online. So organizations can ingest, visualize, analyze, store, and act on streaming and historical IoT data at scale, all in a cloud envi environment managed by Esri. You can use analytics for IoT to connect to virtually any type of high velocity streaming data from IoT sensors and process that data in real time and also send automated messages and alerts when specified conditions occur. You can also design analytic models to process high volume historical data and gain insights into patterns, trends, and anomalies. Uh, let's look at some of the features that Analytics for IoT offers. So Analytics for IoT lets you configure feeds that ingest real-time streaming data. And these feeds can connect to data from industry-leading cloud IoT platforms, messaging brokers, and sensor vendor APIs. And then you can visualize the data immediately in a map and on dashboards. By seeing this data in real time as it comes in, you can get a common operating picture that helps you track your assets, monitor live observations and events, and improve real-time awareness. Analytics for IoT can continuously process and analyze data as it comes in, giving you immediate insight into what's happening. For example, Analytics for IoT can automatically flag positions reported within a geofence and it can calculate motion statistics for moving devices and vehicles, and also detect incident conditions in real time. This helps you spot important observations immediately so you can make timely decisions. Analytics for IoT also lets you generate and send alerts when certain conditions or thresholds in your data are met. These alerts push information to systems, sensors, and devices to prompt actions, changes, and responses. For example, you can send an email or a text notification to a personal, store data for further analysis, or trigger actions from IoT devices in the field. This helps you take quick and effective action when necessary. 
Analytics for IoT also supports batch analytics on large data sets containing millions or even billions of records. This allows you to analyze data at scales that weren't previously possible. So you can understand historical patterns across space and time. You can find hotspots and anomalies and get answers that inform your decisions. Analytics for IoT lets you run big data analytic pipelines on demand or schedule them to execute on a recurring basis. You can also use analytics for IoT to perform big data analytics on IoT data you've stored in ArcGIS or in big data storage systems like an Amazon S3 or Azure Blob. Once you've completed your big data analysis, you can also share these findings with others. So just like in any other uh, application in ArcGIS Online, you would be able to share your information products in a dashboard or in other web applications. You can publish analysis results as feature layers, which can then be easily viewed in maps and apps. All right, so let's look at how analytics for IoT is able to ingest data from feeds, process that data in real time, and run batch analytics. So this is going to be a demonstration here. Many of our users today are working with real time and big data from different types of sensors for workflows that range from situational awareness to incident detection to trend assessment. For example, this is a dashboard of transit information in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're looking at a variety of data streams here public transit, micromobility, social media, and anonymous devices. These larger moving tracks are the city buses traveling around the routes shown in green. The stationary sensors are the city's public bike stations showing the number of available vehicles. Lower, where lower numbers of bikes are shown in red, these are updated every few seconds. The smaller green tracks represent connected vehicles whose ve location would be picked up by roadway sensors. In this case, it's anonymous device data being replayed. And the hexagon layer that you see in the background shows the count of ways alerts that have been reported in the last few days. This type of layer dynamically displays on the fly aggregations so you can see patterns more easily. In this case, we're looking at counts of alerts. But by zooming in, we can also display the raw features to more easily differentiate between the types of alerts. These types of information products provide situational awareness and insights. Now, many of our users are already leveraging GeoEvent and GeoAnalytics server to access and analyze observation data. And this is often really difficult work. Each data stream is unique and brings its own challenges, especially when you are integrating integrating feeds across the entire organization. Sensor data comes in at high velocities and in some cases, which means that you need to be able to scale your infrastructure and then deal with large collections of data. And you typically need dedicated staff to manage the environments and to ensure that they are resilient. Um, I'm excited to show you the capabilities of the geospatial cloud, which is ArcGIS Analytics for IoT. So this is a, a new product that we released this year. It is a hosted, managed SaaS product that enables you to access, analyze, and act on any kind of observation data. It runs on a Kubernetes container-based architecture, which means that it can scale to massive velocities and volumes while all providing advanced spatial analysis. So let's have a look here. Analytics for IoT is an authoring environment for feeds and analytics. It not only ingests information, but it transforms it, enriches it, and acts upon it. The first thing that we're going to do here is create a feed. Creating a feed is a unique uh, guided experience that's designed to help you bring in your real-time data successfully every time. You can get started by choosing what type of feed you want to create, whether it's coming in from ArcGIS or from a cloud platform or from a web or messaging system. We're going to bring in the bus data here, which is a GTFS information that we're replaying to an Azure event hub. Analytics for IoT integrates with cloud platforms 
like Azure and AWS to bring sensor data into ArcGIS for spatial temporal reasoning. The first step is to create a feed by providing the connection information. For an Azure Event Hub, these things are things such as the access key, the endpoint, and the entity path. And then you can proceed uh, from here. It uh, reaches out and gets the schema, and here you can make changes to the field um, and also change the field names um, and the uh, field type as well if needed. Next, you'll be telling um, ArcGIS Analytics for IoT about key properties, such as the location type, uh, XY field, the spatial reference, the date time, and also the tracking ID. Over here, which, it's a track ID which would be used for buses. So once we change all that information, we click the next button and we go ahead and give it a name. And once we give, give this a name, uh, the feed has been created and um, we would be able to get this data into a web map. All we need is a web browser and we can you know, open this up and add this to a map. So this is a new type of item in ArcGIS and it's called a feed layer. Feeds are a type of stream layer, so you can add them to a map and visualize your real-time data. So now we go ahead and drop this in a map viewer. So when we zoom into the Charlotte area, since this is a stream layer, as soon as the information arrives at the Azure Event Hub and is accessed by Analytics for IoT, it's pushed to the map immediately. So there is no need to continuously pull the data set for the latest information. This is the same stream of bus data that we are looking at um, that was in the dashboard. So now that we've seen how we can create a feed uh, and um, visualize it, uh, let's go into doing some real-time analytics here. Uh, you can perform real-time analysis on data coming in through a feed. Analytics for IoT is an engine that interprets and acts on observation data. Let's look at asset, asset monitoring as an example. Many organizations that track vehicles and personal want to know what those assets, uh, when those assets leave a work area or deviate from an expected pattern. This could mean that they're just completing their work for the day, but it, it could also indicate a risk or a danger. Right now, we are simply monitoring city buses as they travel around on their routes. But with real-time analysis, we can also detect and act on deviations. Real-time analytics are what you use when you need to know about something and act immediately. You put them together by linking feeds and tools, asking questions, connecting answers to actions. This real-time analytic calculates the distance of each bus position to its assigned route. And if that distance is above a given threshold, it captures the observation as a deviation. And we can have a look at this result in a map so when we go back to the dashboard um, in the Northwest, we see that a couple of city buses traveled on roads that are not part of their assigned routes. And uh, in the Southeast, we see that a bus traveled on roads that are not part of any bus route. This kind of information illuminates incidents that you might want to investigate more deeply. And with real-time analytics, you can configure output actions, such as sending an email, email alert to a transit manager. Now, in addition to enabling you to analyze data in real time, you can also analyze data that you have collected over time using big data analytics. Uh, big data analytics enables you to access patterns on a broader scale and with analytics for IoT, you can schedule them to run on a regular basis. Let's look at road and lane closures as an example. Many cities provide information to their citizens about road construction projects and the associated road and lane closures, but citizens are also increasingly acting as sensors and are reporting information about road and lane closures through apps like Waze. 
These are all road and lane closures that have been reported by Waze users in the last few days. And immediately you can see that some of these reports don't match up with road construction projects the city has approved. Using a big data analytic, we can compare these two data sets across multiple dim dimensions. This analytic takes the approved road construction projects and the Waze reports and analyzes them in both space and time to identify whether each Waze report matches up to an approved project. This analysis also scores the Waze reports based on proximity and other criteria. Let's look at the analysis results in a map. We can see that some of these reports are now scored differently. The Waze reports in blue match up perfectly with the project that's been approved by the city. The ones in orange don't match up with any project spatially, but they do match up in terms of time and street name. So there are probably just cases where the Waze users didn't click the button fast enough as they pass through a road closure area. The remaining points in red represent Waze reports that don't match up with any approved road construction projects. In some cases, there aren't any projects nearby at all, such as the example on um, the 7th Street here. But in other cases, the Waze report does match up with the road, road project spatially, but not in terms of time. For example, the, road, the report here came in from a user, uh, which is a day after the project was supposed to have been completed. Now that we are really, what we're doing here is that identifying anomalies in space and time. And the power of analytics for IoT is that you can scale your big data analytics to run against hundreds of millions or even billions of features, teasing out irregularities from expected patterns. And these analytics go beyond ad hoc processing to work in near real time because they can be scheduled. This analytic is scheduled to run every five minutes, accessing the latest city data and latest waste reports each time. And this can be tipping off officials to where enforcement may be needed. So uh, you can schedule your big data analytics and turn any geospatial um, analysis into automated service that evolves with new data and it scales and triggers actions as well, all without writing a single line of code. All these feeds and analytics are driving information products that provide situational awareness and insight into behavior. And this is how analytics for IoT brings real time and big data capabilities as a service to Esri's geospatial cloud. It's hosted and managed for you. So uh, it's uh, so automated data ingestion and analysis is going to be easier than being done on premise. As a recap, <clears throat> these are a couple of things that ArcGIS for analytics can do. It can ingest data from real time sensors and feeds. You are able to visualize IoT data in maps and dashboards. Uh, you can use geofencing to monitor areas of interest. You can detect incident conditions, generate alerts, and trigger device actions in real time. And you can analyze trends in space and time. Next, I'll talk about how some of these capabilities can apply to your work. One of the core use cases of ArcGIS for analytics is uh, personal tracking and analytics. You can monitor and analyze real-time data about employee locations and operating conditions reported by wearable sensors and also using mobile devices to help keep employees safe, improve productivity and optimize coordination and allocation in the field. Analytics for IoT also lets you track the real-time location of assets like vehicles or other equipment. Uh, so you can monitor, manage, and optimize your assets. You can also get real-time alerts when an asset crosses a geofence or violates a specific business rule, and you can quickly identify and address an issue. You can also use analytics for IoT to monitor infrastructure um, 
um, covering an array of use cases from network optimization to diagnostics to intrusion detection. You can see spikes in resource utilization. You can get alerts when assets go down, or you can also, um, uh, with the right security, spot an intruder um, siphoning data from a company. This can involve monitoring asset sensors, weather, traffic, or crowds. But even more generally, this is about place of interest monitoring and understanding important activities and events around those places. So you can make timely decisions. So just a recap of how analytics for IoT works. Uh, with analytics for IoT, you begin with creating a feed that ingests real-time data. Feeds can connect to external sources of observational data, such as um, message brokers, third-party API, as well as layers in ArcGIS. Feeds then parse incoming tabular point poly polyline or polygon data and expose it for both visualization and analysis. A feed is also a type of stream layer and can be added to a map to let you see new observations as soon as they are received. Once you've brought data in using a feed, you'll then configure the real-time analytics to do processing and alerting. A real-time analytic is a long-running task that continuously operates on data coming in from a feed, and then it transforms it, enriches it, detecting incidents, and you'll be able to configure actions. This is comparable to a geo event service uh, in geo event server. And you can combine different tools together in a workflow to ask a number of questions and associate different output behaviors with each one. Real-time analytics are useful when decision timeline is operational. And in other words, when you need to know about something and take action immediately. You can also use big data analytics to process data that you store over time. And in many cases, this is data you've stored by capturing data from a feed to a feature layer. A big data analytic is a specific job that fires up, runs an entire pipeline of tools on a set of stored data, and it analyzes trends and pushes out the results. This lets you analyze patterns over time and compare them to other relevant data. And big data analytics are useful when your decision timelines are tactical, when you need to make a decision regularly based on standard practices, or you can call these strategic when you need to learn something over time and adjust large approaches. It's important to note that the same outputs for real-time analytics are also available for big data analytics, so you can take automated actions in your IoT system based on broader patterns and statuses, not just on a single observation. So how do we get started with analytics for IoT? So Analytics for IoT is an annual subscription on top of ArcGIS Online, and it is purchased for each organization individually. It's an overall capability for an organization supporting several simultaneous real-time and big data use cases or missions. Uh, it's not sold by the number of named users because the underlying compute capacity needed uh, is more directly related to use cases and the data velocities coming in. So what does this uh, mean for an ArcGIS user? This web app is available to any creator or GIS professional user in an organization. The app allows you to, for example, configure a feed to ingest sensor observations from IoT to and um, create alerts and also um, set up a pipeline for big data analytics. And your administrators can control who can use this app through a set of new privileges. Uh, but also, when the creators of the, um, the analytics for IoT create output products, they would be able to uh, share these output products with other users within an organization. So the viewers within the organization can access the information products, while the creators and GIS professionals would be able to use the app based on the privileges provided uh, by the administrator. 
these are some resources that I would like to share with you. And uh, before I um, finish the presentation here, uh, I would also like to share with you information about our ArcGIS hub. Um, uh, we have an Esri Boston, uh, Esri Boston Regional uh, site. Um, and this site is a way for us to engage with you. Um, and we have created this site for our region so that we can share the events that are going on here. We share information about the apps. Uh, we highlight a couple of apps here and also the news, uh, new solutions coming up, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, I recommend uh, everyone here to follow this site so that you can keep up with the communications that we send out from here. For example, if there is a new event that's coming up in the future, if there's a webinar that we are hosting from our office, uh, we would let you know from um, if you are following this site. Mm -hmm.